Dr. Mike, you, you did this while having a full-time job, right? That must have taken a lot of discipline to actually write a book and collect all of this information while having a full-time job. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about how you managed that? Like how, how did you balance that with job and we, life and writing a book? Yeah. So honestly, I, I think this was the challenge that made it take 17 years for me to complete it. You know, for the first 24 years of my career, um, I was driving to and from work. I was spending long hours in the office and focusing on my career and my work and having, you know, little time for myself to spend on the book. Uh, every now and then on the weekends, um, I put a little time to the book, but it was very limited. And in 2016, I took a job with the company that I currently work with, uh, Bridge Tree, and they had a remote working environment, which has inspired me never to work in an office again, by the way. <laughs> Um, but, and they have flexible rules around out of the office, um, policies. And I just, I realized two valuable things with this working experience. One working at home gave me those extra three hours. Cause I was driving an hour and a half each way to and from the office. Uh, and, and those extra three hours give me time to focus more on my work and get it done and still have extra time to spend for myself and work on the book. And it, 2016 is really when it started taking off. And while I did take a lot of notes and put things together for those 14 years, it's those last three years that really stood out. And then the second part, the out of office flexibility really helped me on uh, travel. And I got to speak at dozens of countries, you know, multiple conference events. And especially if it was international, I was able to go to the conference, speak at the conference, and then in my evenings and nights, I could uh, do my work during U.S. hours. So uh, very, the, the company really helped me, and, 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 I, and I owe them a great deal of gratitude for that. But, you know, it also helped me realize that regardless of whether you're working remotely, and we're all working remotely now, but mm -hmm. uh, right now, but regardless of whether you are or you're going to the office, it's really about what you do with your time. Um, Zig Ziglar says we all have 24-hour days. Nobody has more or less. And I think it's important to really manage your time and be able to understand what am I doing with the time that I have. You know, we catch ourselves binge watching Netflix or, or just doing nothing sometimes. And I think that gets us in trouble, you know, and mm -hmm. we've got a short life. Life is shorter than we believe. And you know, making time and really putting time to it is really important. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I, I was also very curious to uh, understand what your organization structure was like, Mike. Like in the book, you mentioned about write a diary, you know, write, write notes of what you've done through life. And what was your structure like and how did you organize your thoughts and things like that? You know, that? there are so many ways to be organized and, and we could talk about this for days. You could do several, <laughs> several uh, broadcasts on yeah. this. Uh, but I have multiple ways um, that I do things and, and I track things. I, I really liked, I listened to one of your um, uh, YouTube videos where you talked about a plan every Sunday night for the mm -hmm. week ahead. That's what I started in 2002. And I think it's critical. If you know what you're going to do all week, you can go ahead and start planning. And if money doesn't happen, you can move it to Tuesday. If it's, feasible to do that. But knowing every day what you're doing the next day, that's critical. I always keep a list. I always work from a list. I have a work list and I have a to-do list for home and personal life as well. And I think keeping those two is very critical. Um, in the book, I have a chapter called DWYSYWD, mm -hmm. which stands for do what you said you would do. Uh, and it takes the to-do list to another level. Because that to-do list, we, we, we're good at keeping lists. Some people are. Uh, some people aren't. But most people are good at keeping a list. But the one thing we fail to do is track when those things are due. And a do what you said you would do list is taking down what you committed to do, who you committed to do it for, and what time you plan to deliver it. That way you can, it helps you with prioritizing, okay, task three is due tomorrow. I got to do it now. You know, I have no no extra time to do that one. Task one is later in the week. I can work on that later. Uh, so I think that's one way. Um, and another way, you know, is to keep that list, like I said, with work and personal, but I'm, I'm going to step into the software testing world here a little bit and talk mm -hmm. about mind maps and anybody that listens to any presentation I've mm -hmm. done, the 31 I've done this year, um, they'll laugh because I don't seem to be able to, every sentence I, I share in a software testing talk is, you know, a noun, a verb and mind maps. 
-hmm. but but I like to use mind maps and I fell in love with mind maps and the way that they work. I think it, it helps communicate. It, it, it speaks in everybody's language. It's very visual. And I think it's a very collaborative way to get organized. Um, if you're working with a team or whatever job you have, whether it's software testing or not, um, I think it's very critical uh, if you use mind maps to be able to make everybody speak the same, you know, language and, and, and look at things the same way. So if you haven't used mind maps, I use X mind. They need to pay me for all the promotions I've given for them, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, they have a free version and it's a powerful tool. Um, it's not the only one There's many out there, but I really like what, uh, what I can do with mind maps and I've used it for personal and work as well. Yeah. I like, I like mind maps as well. Um, I use it, I use it mostly for brainstorming and sometimes, you know, you have all these ideas yeah. and you don't know how to go about with it. All I have to do at that time is just start, uh, making a mind map. Sometimes oh, I absolutely. use X mind and sometimes I just use my book, my pencil, yeah. and pencil or pen and start doing that. So I think it's a simple exercise, which, is, which oh, not a is. lot of people know about or, I know. you know, yeah, it's, it's so simple and it's so easy to do and it's so effective most of the time. So. I think a lot of people, if you're watching this and if you haven't used mind map yet, go look it up and check Oh it yes, out. please do. And you know, you'll know you've arrived when you have VPs and executives talking about mind maps. I mean, my VPs and, and CIO, uh, CEO in the company, all of them speak about mind maps. They know I'm going to throw that out. If we're having a meeting, I'm going to grab the screen and I'm going to start mind mapping. I don't care what we're talking about. And, you know, it could be a simple mind map if it's a simple meeting, but I've always got a mind map at the end and, and they know they're going to expect that from me. So you, you'll get really addicted. It's probably the most addictive thing I do in my day to day job right now. Nice. I like that, too. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, what are the books that inspire you? Wow. So